How's it going, folks? How's it going? I'm Brother Matthew, and this is Christian Coffee Time, where we sit down together to study the Word of God. And again, that's what we're going to be talking about today, just a little bit. Um, so it's come up um, a question, uh, something I say quite often when I'm talking about studying the Bible, and that we need to study the Bible, only the Bible, and that to ignore catechisms, councils, creeds, and commentaries, that kind of stuff. Well, the reason why I say that, and I'd like to clarify this, as some people have actually asked me about this, um, is there anything actually inherently wrong with studying other writings, books, and materials? No, no. You see, when I say this, you'll note that I'm emphasizing specifically on Scripture alone, that the Word of God stands alone, that the Word of God, the Scriptures, the Bible, is the sole absolute authority. That what it says is what it means. You see, the problem that a lot of other people have when it comes to this is that they're using um, the councils and commentaries and catechisms to interpret the Bible. That they don't just read this alone, that they have to read these other things and that these other things will tell you what the Bible is saying. No. This tells you what these things should say. And the problem that so many Christians have is they are eager to read other sources, other books, other materials, other authors before reading this. They'll spend more time in these things than this. And that their mentality, their mental state, and their understanding of Scripture will be molded by these things and not the Bible. That's what I'm trying to help get people away from, to get away from that stuff. Now, to read other sources and things, well, that's fine. Go for it not a problem in that way as long as it's in its proper place and that you're spending more time reading the bible than you are the other sources because how can you know if these other sources are actually biblical they may sound biblical they may quote bible verses they may sound great in doctrine and theology they may sound great they may seem good how do you know how can you test the spirits of things if you don't know what the word of God is saying? It's like it's like the saying, yeah, how, how do you how can you say what would Jesus do if you never study the Bible to see what he did? So we want to study the word of God first and foremost before anything and everything. See what it says absolutely on a thing and then go see what this other stuff is saying. And if it contradicts the word of God even remotely, then it's wrong. And the Bible's true. You see, for example, I often put this up, the recommended authors and books. These guys have excellent, fantastic stuff. Now, it doesn't mean that absolutely every single thing that they say is, is purely, perfectly, biblically accurate. Nobody is. No, no author is, other than the authors of Scripture. Uh, now, all because individuals may call themselves, or may be called, like the fathers of the Reformation. Call no man father, for there's only one is your father, even God. And these, uh, these other writers and stuff, uh, great commentaries and books and great Bible books, all because they're writing on Scripture doesn't mean that they're apostles. Doesn't mean that they're infallible. It doesn't make what they're writing Scripture. It's extra biblical. It's outside the Bible. So you want to take all these kinds of things, uh, writings and authors and uh, other authors and stuff, and you want to make sure that you understand that's outside the Bible. So how do you know that they're right? Now, for example, as uh, I've always talked about quite often, like John Calvin or John MacArthur or Charles Spurgeon or R.C. Sproul, uh, all these individuals, you know, have... They, they, some of them have great writing. But like, for example, now I know this is going to shock a lot of people. C.S. Lewis has written a lot of stuff, but he wasn't a Christian. Yes, shocker, shocker. C.S. Lewis was not a Christian. He was a mystic Anglican who believed in baptismal regeneration and he converted to Roman Catholicism before he died. And that uh, he's he's actually has a lot of extreme heretical heretical stuff that he's he's actually written and said. Uh, you can actually find in a lot of his books. Um, if you want to know more about that, please go watch my video on the Chronicles of Narnia. 
uh, when I did on that one, I actually talk about some of the stuff that he said. It's absolutely just blasphemous and heretical. And people tout him as a great, a great Christian author. You see, this is what I'm talking about. How can you know if these other individuals um, that have written great uh, commentaries and all that kind of stuff? What about the Council? Council of Nicaea. Well, that was Roman Catholic. That wasn't Christian. You see, this is what I'm talking about. So many Christians don't study this first. And because of that, they get caught up in other deceptions and delusions. Like we talked about the other day about the great heresy that is limited atonement of hyper-Calvinism. That is heresy. It is absolutely anti-Bible in so many ways. And we went into great detail on that. So we got to see what does the Bible flat out say in and of itself. This is the authority. What it says goes. Study this verse. Hold to this. Uh, put this on the pedestal by itself. And no other book or thing is to tell you what to believe. Only this tells you what to believe. And if anything else, doesn't matter what it what it is, where it came from, who wrote it, or whatever, if it contradicts the word of God even remotely, it's wrong. The Bible's true. So keep that in mind. God bless.